Today we're going to be having a look at how to make this component over here. Uh, it's got a few, I wouldn't say complicated, but uh, interesting shapes to work with. And we're going to be using this technical drawing over here. This I just got off of Pinterest. Um, and this is just a practice ex exercise. So I'm doing a step-by-step -step guide on how to do this. I will upload this image to a Google Drive folder and leave a link in the description so you can download it when you practice. So let's get started. So to get started on this one, I'm going to be working off of this technical drawing that I've loaded as a canvas in another tab. So the finished product looks like that. You had a look at it when we started. Um, my approach for this one will be to draw this side profile and extrude it symmetric on both sides and then add in this tab afterwards and then I will mirror the tab to get the second side. So to get started let's get this, um, this uh, shape going. So I can see that 70 and 24 so the length from that point to the center point of this curve is 94 millimeters and from this curve up will be 34. Um, so let's just start with drawing a vertical line and a horizontal line. So I'm going to create a sketch. So top left, create sketch, click on that. And we're going to select the plane we want to draw it on. I'm selecting front plane. Then you just click on the plane and it'll bring up the menu. The reason I'm doing this is so that if you look over here, I've got this front plane as my center plane if I extrude out this way and that way symmetrically. So let's start on the front plane. Line tool, top left. I'll start it at the origin. Pull it out and dimension it to 94 millimeters. So I just typed in 94. Enter. Let's move that. So I use my second the center mouse, mouse button to just move around there. I'll do it again, but this time instead of clicking on the line, I'll just line tool, I'll just push L on the keyboard. That's the shortcut key to make a line. And I'll drag this up. So long as it's more than 34, we're good. I'll show you how I trim it off later on. So we've got some lines to work with. We've got that going up 10 millimeters, so we can add that in. And then we add in our two um, quarter circles at 24 millimeter radius and this one is 34 because I can see that's 10 apart so 10 up that'll be 34 so L for line tool again I like to use the shortcut keys it's just easier for me so once you get used to it um, you can use them too now I'll go back to the origin slide it up and there it's snapped to 10 millimeters just click I will press escape and now I'm going to be going to create and we'll select arc and go into this tab center point arc click it now I'm going to be able to draw a circle or arc from the center point so if I click on this corner which is where I want my center point to be I can pull it out to any dimension I want for this one I'm going to be 24 and it snaps to that line and then you can just drag it or just move the mouse around and it will continue to draw it but I'm going to snap it onto that line I'm going to do the same thing for the next circle or next quarter circle arc center point arc and this will be 34 I'll click on there and dimension it to that line over there so there we've got something that's starting to look closer. So now I'm going to draw this line, click on there. I want it to snap to this line. I'm going to dimension this to what it is. And there it's gone black, which means it is fully constrained. So previously it wasn't uh, constrained, but now it is. I want to get rid of this and these lines 
So if I push T, I'll be able to trim this. You can also go up here and push trim there, click on trim. Now these you'll notice, as soon as I remove them, the circle is no longer constrained. So what I'm going to do now, because I don't want those as solid lines, I want those as construction lines. I can click on line tool. On the right here in your sketch palette, click construction and bring it to that point and that point. Now we can see it's fully constrained again because it knows that exact dimension. So if we look at that now, we've got that side profile. So we can actually end the sketch. So I'm going to finish sketch and now we're going to extrude this. So on the top left there where it says extrude, I'll click on that and I'll click on this profile that we're going to extrude. Now I can drag this arrow and move it in the direction I want but I want to make sure this is symmetric on both sides. So here where it says direction I'll click the drop down and go to symmetric. So this basically just doubles whatever you putting on the one side. So I know that this is 60 millimeters. We can see there 50 plus 10 at 60 or you can just double the radius of that circle which is 30 so there we get to 60. So I'm going to go back in here, let's extrude, I just close it off there and I'm going to set this to 30. So each side is 30. So there's our first extrude. Now we're going to go back into the side profile to draw that tab. Um, so I can see it goes up 40, it goes across 40 and then there's that gap at 30. So let's draw, uh, do another sketch on this side profile. So I'm going to create sketch. You just hover over the profile and you see it kind of changes color. That means it's selecting it. You just click on it and there that's our profile. So I'm just going to back into front plane, line tool. Now I want it to snap to this. You can see it's as I go over it, it snaps. That, that little square, click on it. I'm going to go up 40. So 40. And you can see the angle over there is 90. If I move it, it's off, but it can snap to 90. So I want that at 40. And this one will also be 40. Also at a 90 degree angle. And escape button to exit the line tool. So now I'm going to put a little construction line there so I know where these two lines join. So I'll click line tool, there's construction line selected in your sketch palette. I'll just snap it to that line, draw it down and then I will dimension it. So if I push D, it brings up that tape measure and I can click up there and I want that to be 30. So it'll shift it to where we want it. Now I'll go into line tool again first, turn off construction, L for line tool, and join that. Now we've got this basic tab on the side, but those have a radius of 10, sort of a fillet on the side. So I'm going to add that fillet in, go back to this. Here is your fillet tool. So you can click on either side and type in, it was 10. So we've got that 10, or I can click on fillet tool and just select the tip. So you can either click on each line or just select that point. And again, I'm going to make it 10. And I can see this is still fully constrained. I'm just going to grab this dimension and move it out of the way there. Now we've got this little circle going through there and I can see the center point is 20 millimeters from the right and 15 millimeters from the top. So I'm just going to do a point here. Create point and I'll just put it roughly where I think it should go. Now I'm going to dimension this point. I'll push D to dimension. I'll click on that point and click on the side and I know that was 20. So let's make that 20. I'll do the same thing. It's still dimension tool selected. Click there and click on that top line and that needs to be 15. So now I know that that is the center point of this circle which has a radius of 8. 
So now I'll select center diameter circle, click on that, click on our point, and you can either say eight times two, or you can just type in 16. And there we have that profile. And we can see it all black lines, which means it's fully constrained. I can finish this sketch and extrude it. So I'll click extrude. Just gonna shift our viewpoint a bit, grab this arrow, and I want that to be 10. So that's gone nicely to 10. Okay, so you'll notice in the extrude, you have different options over here. Join, cut, intersect, new body. If I had to say new body, it would make that separate to this part, but I want that join, so I'll click join. Now I need to repeat this feature on the other side. There's a handy tool for this. If I go into create and mirror, I want to mirror a feature and I'm going to select this feature from our timeline and the mirror plane will be this front plane because that's centered and I can see it fits perfectly on there. If I click OK we're almost done. Now we've got this hole and this full round in the front there. So what you can do is I can go to Fillet Tool, you can have, you have a drop down here, Fillet, Rule Fillet or Full Rounds, so I'm going to select Full Round and just try to get the right section, there we go, we've got our Full Round, turning the origin off so I don't have to see that plane, I've just selected Top so I can view it from the top, I'm going to be Hole. I'm going to click on here and as soon as I move it you can see there's a white dot there that's the center of that point so I want it to be located at the center distance is all which just means it's going to go through the whole object and if I click OK this process and there we have the object that we were looking to design. If I go back to this image, and by the way I got this image from Pinterest, so I'm assuming it's free to use. I will upload it to a Google Drive folder uh, so you can access it and practice off of it. There's our component. So I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, please like and subscribe. If you have any questions, you can contact me at fusionfundamentals at gmail.com or you can leave a comment. Till next time, bye.